Buckle up, people. This episode is going to be profound, life changing, and hilarious. Probably not. Welcome to the Expat Brat Podcast. I'm Salman Qureshi. I'm super excited about this episode because it's about ninjas and I grew up on that stuff and I've been enamored by them forever. But first, we're going to be talking about things that have been going on in my life because I really use this show as a journal for my own mental health. It's cheaper than therapy. So first of all, I'm going to start with some wins, man. Um, I have been working really hard in the gym. I've been, uh, it's helped that, you know, kind of things have been uh, starting late for me in terms of work. So I, I have time in the morning and I've been hitting the stationary bike a lot and my cardio is up. So it's been, it's been feeling, I've been feeling really great. And then I lost weight, which is something (laughs) I've been struggling to do for a while now. It wasn't all just exercise, of course. It was uh, it was the food you eat and blah blah blah. And um, I recently, you know, uh, over the last few months, I've really cut out processed foods, mostly eating out, especially junk food. Like that has just made me feel so much better. And now I'm trying to push it a bit more by cutting off some stuff that I'm addicted to, mainly. And this is this is gonna shock anyone who knows me. Desserts, man. Like that stuff, I just feel like it's the, it's part of my life. Like, what is life without desserts? And and having to think about cutting out sugar and, and all that stuff, it almost feels like who am I without that? And but but sugar is the next uh, is my next enemy that I'm going to try cutting off. And and I'll keep you posted on how that's going. But overall, uh, I think I've been pretty good. <clears throat> And I've, I felt better. So knowing that I lost some weight and a little bit around my waist, uh, it makes me feel a bit proud, you know, um, just makes you want to keep going then. So that's that's one of the things I've been very happy about. It's something I keep talking about. And I really finally just got sick of it. You know, <laughs> I just I just saw some pictures of me from some shows and I was wearing something that shouldn't be unflattering on me but i just it was like my tummy just popping out and i was like oh i can't i can't i can't do this anymore i can't look at myself i don't want this so so it's been good i've been i've been uh, i've made it a big focus and i, I i've been quite happy with it and i think it, it it's coupled with a few other wins that i'm you know that i've been doing um jan on jan 1st from jan 1st I cut out social media. I deleted all my social media apps from my phone. And I again, I've talked a little bit about it, but it's been three months now and I haven't felt the need to add them back. I think I've felt really great without them. It's been insane, you know. Uh, and, and listen, just a disclaimer. I'm not on an anti-social media crusade. Far be it. I think it really works for some people. Um, it can really help. It's a tool and I don't judge tools. Um, I think what it was for me as I'm, as I'm been continuing my break from it is I just got to a point where I didn't know why I was using it anymore. Right. Um, and also there were two things, why, and, and the, the honest and and just being honest with myself, I just realized I'm not good at this. (laughs) I just no good. With social media, and it, it, back in the day, it was kind of fun, and, and it helped me. And of course, it, it's been making comics famous and allowing them to break through and stuff. But I just, I just never got good at it. And I look back at it and I go, I, I, I tried it, I tried it, and I, I really gave it a go at times, but it wasn't, it wasn't doing much for me, and I didn't like what it was doing to me. So, uh, so I think. I haven't missed it for that reason. If anything, I felt really good without it. Um, and the why also became sharper for me because I was like, when I told myself at the beginning of the year that let me go off and regroup and decide how I want to hit this thing again, the answer isn't there yet for me, you know? And, and it just became so much more clear to me that 
I didn't know why I was using it anymore. If it was to stay in touch with friends, then being off it has actually helped me a lot more because, you know, when you're on it, you kind of, you see the stuff they've posted, you kind of like each other's stuff, you'll comment, share a meme in the messages and whatnot, and you feel like you're making an effort, right? It's like, but actually what you're kind of doing is like an easy way to brush it off. And when I wasn't on it, I actually had to make a bigger effort to go, oh man, I haven't seen or talked to this person in a while, so I better message, I better call them. I better go over and see them. And those things uh, I felt better about, you know, about my relationships. And and I guess uh, overall it just made me really, um, really do it meaningful with, with meaning. Do it, yeah, make, make it meaningfulness. I, I don't know what the, you, you get it, right? I was trying to make it, it just means more to me now. And and, and, and so I, I, you know, I just feel so good about it. Uh, again, if it's working for you, if you're good at it and you're making money off it or whatever, uh, I, I, I'm sure I'm, I'm taking a hit financially in some ways. But most of the work I wanted to do this year didn't require social media or not from me personally. And so I've been able to escape it for a bit, too. Uh, I, I don't say never say never kind of situation. I You know, um, in the last three months, I've downloaded a couple of the apps to just check in on a message or if I really had to share something. Uh, so I've done it maybe once or twice in the last three months. That That's it. But I haven't missed it. And that's a funny thing. And I think it's led to some other stuff for me, too, because it, what, what ends up happening is... Um, you, you uh, for me at least, I felt like I'm a news junkie. I'm a junkie uh, for reading stuff online and stuff. But I just got cut off from the news to some extent. I didn't feel the need to read it as much. Um, like I said, I enjoy it. But at the same time, it just got to a point. Social media kind of makes you go, especially if you're a comic or whatever, that I need to stay up to date with everything going on, you know, have my finger on the pulse, all that kind of stuff. But because I wasn't doing it and I was trying to do standard material that's more relevant to me personally, I didn't feel the need so much to catch up. I watch my shows and everything, but the news, the day-to-day news, it just cut off. And that makes me feel better too overall um, to not be in the race to find out what's the breaking news and then try to comment or joke about it or whatever. It just kind of fell apart. And I that's another thing that I've just felt really good about too. So that... You know, those wins, man, some great wins for me, me- mental health wise, physically, like I feel good. I'm in a good place in, in, in terms of that. So take what you may out of it. But that's what's going on with me. Um, the, the the dumb f- and failure stuff. Well, um, look, I said I lost weight. I lost point two zero kgs. <laughs> this is after I've been working out all month. So I didn't feel too good about that. Um, but I think, you know, I'll take any loss at this point. Um, it's a good, it's a good loss and, and maybe it's just, you know, it's a start of a trend. So I'm hoping I get better at point two zero kgs. Oh, I worked so hard for that. Um, the other thing I, that was a bit of a fail was I, I told you I lost a little around my waist. It was a centimeter. I lost a centimeter, not even an inch, a centimeter. It's not all, it's not all bad though, right? <laughs> because what I, I read, I don't know if this is true, uh, but what I read somewhere was that you actually, when you're losing weight, you losing your fat, you kind of lose the fat around internal organs, especially your liver, because that's where the fat also surrounds, apart from your waist and everything. So when you first start losing weight, the body attacks that fat first, which you can't see. And and so the waist takes longer, the, the superficial stuff, if you may, not really, but you know. So that, that stuff takes more time to lose. So I think, you know, it's a good sign if I've lost anything around my waist, I probably have lost some around my liver and stuff. Again, if it's all true, if it's correct medical information, then just means I'm healthier and less likely to die of a heart attack or whatever the reason I do this science stuff, um, health stuff, sorry. Um, <laughs> and so so overall, it's, it's a win. It's a win moment um, with minor failures. I'll, I'll take that, right? I think that's a good place to be. Anyway, it's time to get on with my topic. And now, on with the show. Ninjas, man. 
<laughs> ninjas. Now, this, before I get into the whole, what the reason I'm look, I'm I'm not talking about this from a point of an expert and stuff. It's it's nostalgia for me, but I I, I felt I felt like I was, I've been thinking about it lately, and so I was like, yeah, let's let's talk about this stuff. You know, it's kind of it's very cool. Um, I think it was because I I was surfing through uh, music on Apple Music, and I I I started listening to this Vanilla Ice song, which I don't know. Are you supposed to publicly admit these things? And it's this song called Go Ninja Go, right? It goes, Go Ninja, Go Ninja, Go Ninja Go. And I loved it when it came out. It was part of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie part two. Um, and, and part one had an even cooler song because then I went back to that. I'm forgetting the name now. Uh, but it was, again, like a ninja song. It was some other rapper. And uh, I should look this up before I do my episodes, right? Hang on, hang on. I'm going to take a little quick break and, and look this up. Turtle Power by Partners in Crime. I think that was, the, that was the name of the artist. I don't know them well, but that song, yeah, again, I was a kid growing up in the 90s and stuff. So, yeah, that's it. It's a good, I think Turtle Power, uh, the beat to it, it's still like kind of, it, it's aged well. Like I, I would still listen to that stuff. Ninja Vanilla Ice one, not so much, maybe. <laughs> I mean, I still enjoy it, but it's probably not cool anymore. Was it ever cool? I don't know. Anyway, uh, Ninja Turtles are going to come back. I I want to begin in the 80s. It was a time when martial arts in general was becoming a big thing, right? Uh, I had Bruce Lee, uh, Jackie Chan, Jean-Claude Van Damme with Blood Sports, you know all these all these great movies that come out. <laughs> great when I say, uh, and, and I, I got exposed to them early because my dad loves action movies. So he grew up. Uh, I, I was watching, you know, Arnold and Sylvester and all these act anything with action he loved, and so I got to watch all of them from a very young age. Probably probably not a good thing to be exposed to so much violence. Maybe I don't know. I grew up okay, or did I? I don't know. Um, jury's still out. Are they? Are they? <laughs> but so I, I I watched all these great films and I got into the martial arts stuff. It was just the trend, you know. And I remember we were so clueless about it in growing up in Saudi because um, there weren't that many, you know, kids nowadays that go to these schools, karate schools and stuff. That wasn't common back then in the Middle East. So uh, I remember this kid. It was in third grade, and. I think his name was Ibrahim. I'm pretty sure his name was Ibrahim, which is crazy because he didn't stick around. I think he moved away pretty soon. And I'm horrible remembering names, uh, uh, trying to you know keep up with names. I can't remember names of people I've met now two days ago, but his name sticks out. And <laughs> he was, he came in and he was like, he spoke as an expert, right? Great, third grade or fourth grade. That's I think that's where we were. And... He spoke like an expert, so we all just believed everything he said. And he was passionate about martial arts and claimed to have studied and trained and stuff. So I, <laughs> we had this thing uh, in our school where at the end, we'd all go for the afternoon prayer before going home. You had to go to it, right? And they would do these prayers in uh, in this, like, in our playground in the shaded area because... I don't know why. I don't know why they didn't build a separate prayer area. Because we were a lot of kids. It was the whole school would come together, or at least you know, uh, the primary and the secondary would do different. Whatever you go in, and they'd lay out these carpets, huge carpets, where we'd all gather to pray. Um, this was the mid afternoon, the Zuhr prayer that Muslims do, right? And I, I hated it, not <laughs> because. I just, as a kid, I just hated being forced to do anything. And then also, before we pray, we kind of wash up and stuff. And all these kids would just walk up with their wet socks and feet and, and onto that carpet. And, and it would get wet. And it just melt. Because then they'd roll it up and roll it back out the next day. And it's just, just really, like, and we live in the desert, right? So it's dusty. All of that. I just hated the smell. So it just, but what I did like about it. It was just before the prayer. We had like good 15, 20 minutes to just run around, get ready for prayer. Um, if, if and, and what that meant was just mucking about. And this kid, Ibrahim, we, he, he would talk to us. And I remember these conversations where he, he would do like these locks on us. 
And I think he was just making it up when I look back at it now. And we tried to like slide our way out of it and break out. And based on that, he would decide what belt we wear. <laughs> he would just go, you know, you know, Sal- Salman, you, you did this. Uh, you're like, you're like at the yellow belt level. And another friend would be confined to white belt because he didn't break out properly. And another one would be slightly higher. I don't even remember what belt colors there are after yellow. <clears throat> But it was um, it was pretty funny because we just believed it, and we were so we just wanted his uh, attention and his uh, approval, so that when he did confer whatever <laughs> belt he did on us, we 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 were like, yeah, like I had no training, no class ever taken for martial, but I believed that I was the equivalent of a yellow belt. And I just think, what a moron I was, you know, how stupid was I? And we all just believed him because he was so confident about it. Uh, no one fact-checked it. I don't know, not not amongst my friends. We were just stupid. Um, but it was cool. It was cool at that time. And, 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 and so in general, martial arts was like a cool thing for me. But then the ninjas, right? My dad would also show me these Japanese ninja films. And and I don't know, I don't remember half of them, what they were, what their name was, but I was just like, this is so cool. They're like blending into the dark and they're wearing these cool black outfits um, with swords and nunchucks and those star things. What do you call those star things they throw and, and just disappearing with the smoke. And I don't know why their dress enamored me so much. I lived in Saudi. I saw women dressed up like that all the time. But look, um, it was just cool. All right. It was just super, super fascinating. And then you had all these movies that were specific ninja ones that were fun as well. Like there was the kid stuff like America Ninja. Uh, that was fun. There were the three ninjas, the three ninjas. There were kids doing it. And so it was like, hey, man, I could be a, uh, I could be a ninja. And, and then you had the cooler ones. Uh, and it was all like, even though a lot of times the ninjas were sort of the bad guys, I loved it. I it just were so cool. Um, Snake Eyes from G.I. Joe is one of my favorite characters, right? He's pretty much a ninja. And and so they were just so awesome. And so I wanted to be one. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to be a ninja. And I'm glad I didn't take that route because as I found out later in my life, very recently, as I studied stuff about ninja, I realized, hey, the, that stuff was just Hollywood stuff. It just, they just bastardized that as well, right? So what, the movies just turn it into all the tropes of ninja stuff that we see, apparently they didn't dress like that. Apparently they didn't do all that smoke stuff and disappear. What their mode was like, they were more like spies. So when you want to be a good spy, you kind of blend in, in normal clothes. So that they were actually like more, you know, um, kind of cooler about it, subtle about that stuff. And that broke my heart. <laughs> Cause I, now it's just some guy roaming him around. I don't know. Their training was probably still cool, and I think some of their weapons were correct. Um, the, the, the cool stuff that I did learn about them was that uh, samurais and ninjas, they just, the samurais had like a very strong code of how you attacked and stuff, where the ninjas, whereas the ninjas were like, anything goes to win, you know? And so the two of them, their their whole history was quite interesting to me. And that was the cool stuff, but I really, I really wish that smoke thing was true. <laughs> you know, just... It was one of the coolest things that stood out for me. And then along came the Ninja Turtles. And that was like a combination of everything I loved. It was, it was well, not turtles per se, but, but cool cartoons, funny stuff, the Japanese stuff, the, the ninja stuff, and the evil Shredder and his team, and eventually the cool songs, right? So, so all of that put together was just enamoring to me. And, but... This one thing happened. I was, I was really interested in Ninja Turtles. And then my uncle, he, my favorite uncle, he went to, he was visiting the States and he got some stuff for us of Ninja Turtle merchandise and toys when he came back. It wasn't easy to find in Saudi. And <clears throat> I was like really looking forward to it. Uh, some of the, And then he brought this stuff and he had these t-shirts. So that was very cool. I had my Ninja Turtles t-shirts. And then he brought, he brought these toys. And I, um, and my younger brother and I, we kind of like tried dividing. I got... He got Donatello, and I picked up this, uh, it looked like these walkie-talkies for Ninja Turtles, right? They were shaped like the turtle shell. It, they looked awesome. So I grabbed that versus my younger brother because I thought that was the cooler toy. And when I took it out, I realized they weren't actual walkie-talkies. 
they were these Morse code things. So all it did was like you press this button and go dee, 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 dee. And up until then, I had kind of heard about Morse code in school, but I we never studied it. And I didn't know what it was. And, it, and I was just so disappointed. I was like, this is stupid. <laughs> I never told my uncle that. He, he saw me really happy about the stuff. He didn't see the disappointment after. Um, it's pretty bratty of me to not be happy with that toy. Uh, but anyway, it was just, it was more, I think when I look back at it now, I think if I hadn't been such an ungrateful brat, I would have learned Morse code through it because it had like the whole system and how to do it. But I was just so disappointed I tossed it aside. I didn't even like play with it like as a fake thing and, you know, when you play make-believe or whatever. Uh, that was stupid. <laughs> just, but also it was, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Anyway, that was a little bit of a disappointing story. Uh, and that was that. And, and And then I think the whole ninja thing died, at least for me, for a long, long time. And I haven't thought about ninjas, which is weird because why would I think about ninjas in general? <laughs> but maybe no cool film has come out in a while. Um, until I saw House of Ninjas. That's the other thing that sparked this. So Netflix had this show called House of Ninjas. It's it's all right. It's nothing great. But um, I, I, I kind of liked it. But more so, it just kind of brought back some stuff about the whole idea of ninjas and everything and how they're portrayed and how cool that stuff would be. And would they be useful in this day and age where you've got too many cameras and um, super weapons and stuff? How would the new ninja thing be now in the modern? I think that's the next movie I'd like to see is the adaptation of ninjas to modern technology and life and how how they could still be realistic about it you know that I, I would watch that film so if anyone is writing a script you're welcome I, i've just given you a, a multi-million dollar film idea right which i would you have at least one audience member that would definitely buy a ticket <laughs> me um anyway uh that 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 was the kind of exposure i had to, for ninjas and stuff and i love that stuff and and i think uh lately I've, I'm, I'm just gonna study stuff around it a bit more I think I'm too old to go back and like learn martial arts unless in your 40s that's possible. If you think, please let me know. I don't want to break bones, man. I just, I, I can't. Um, so that's that. And uh, I've been busy with some TV shows too. Lately, the other stuff I've been watching is uh, this show called Rookie. Um, it's the sixth season is just on, but Netflix out here has only the first five seasons which I binged. Um, that was great when you find a show that has a few seasons out already. I also did that with 911 Reno. Is that, or is that Austin? Yeah, the one in based in uh, in Texas, Austin. Yeah, both great shows. I have a lot of respect for first responders now, I guess. But mostly I'm watching it for the action and the danger and crazy stuff. Thanks, Dad, uh, for all my love of bad stuff <laughs> yeah but i would recommend both shows i think they're cool they're not groundbreaking television but they're definitely tv shows that uh good to kill some time with um that's my expert review of those things <laughs> anyway listen guys this this episode that's all i have that's that's i'm just gonna give you a very simple two-line thing about this um i hope you've enjoyed this episode I had a great time recording it um, take care. See you next time. Thanks for joining us on another adventure with the Expat Brat, proudly brought to you by Capra Productions. If you enjoyed the show, please help us keep the mic running by clicking the link in the description and dropping as little as $3 to support us. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you never miss out on our latest episodes.